This week, lawyers representing five of the best-known museums in the United States are challenging a $100 million lawsuit. Controversial New York artist Robert Sainadella is accusing the museums, including the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art and the Guggenheim, of behaving like a corporate cartel. Saint Adela says the institutions in question ignore artists, himself included, unless they are represented by a very elite group of galleries. He claims it's a secret financial arrangement between the museums and the galleries, increasing the value of artists represented by the galleries when they're featured in the museums. Everyone from art critics to culture journalists have had a lot to say about Robert Saint Adela's lawsuit. Among them is Evan Siegel, who is covering this story for the dailybeast.com. He joins me now via Skype from New York. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, now, on St. Adela's website, uh, his paintings are described as approaching the art with controversy for the sake of controversy. Now, do you think that this lawsuit is an extension of that? Well, thanks for having me. That is certainly one way of reading it. Um, he works a lot with satire and cultural commentary, so this lawsuit, if anything, could be read as another one of his artworks, if anything. Mm -hmm. Well, he's suing the top five museums in New York for a total amount of $100 million for essentially not being able to get where he should be uh, at the moment in his career as an artist. Is this a valid enough reason to sue? <laughs> well, I, I doubt many people would think so. Um, in the lawsuit itself, he actually alleges that the museums have somewhat conspired with each other and a select few galleries to build up the brands of certain artists and keep others down. Um, whether this is valid is questionable, although um, the question of whether one can sue about it or not is kind of out of the question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the museum's lawyers said the top artists are shown at the top art galleries. So what exactly does it take for an artist to get their works placed into a museum? That's the question. Um, museums are very vague about exactly what it takes to get an artist's work in their collection. The most public available guidelines they have are what's called um, collections management policies, which are posted on their websites. Um, these are very vague and full of ambiguities, though mostly they just say um, the art must forward the stated mission of the museum, which again is ambiguous. To get into a gallery is another question and often involves pulling strings, having the right connections, being part of the right social circles. So you can see how a number of people would feel left out even if their art is up to a certain quality. So do you think that St. Adela kind of has a point here? Well, certainly some would say so. I mean, uh, the art world definitely has a rampant discrimination problem, as do a number of other industries. But the way that the art world currently works, and when I say art world, I mean the art business of buying and selling it, getting artists into galleries and museums, is very unregulated and does rely a lot on um, so social connections and and these qualities that not many people have access to. Mm -hmm. Well, with all the resources that we have uh, in our day, whether it be social media or private auction houses, it, are museums and galleries the only places that artists can actually make good money from? I mean, it's certainly possible to make a living off of social media if you're an artist that is popular enough to sell their work on it and, and make that much money. Although the level of prestige is certainly not the same as having your work in a gallery, let alone a museum. And the money is certainly not the same either. <laughs> I mean, you see paintings nowadays going for millions, tens of millions, hundreds of million dollars. Um, you'd be hard pressed to find an artist on Instagram selling their work for that much as well. Well, earlier you kind of touched upon the regulations uh of the art world, and St. Adela says that the art world is the last regulated business in America. Do you think that's true? Well, I, I think he says last unre unregulated business. I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that the art world, there's a lot written on how unregulated it is, how much price fixing and um, 
kind of in, insider trading, if you will, there is. Um, whether that exists in other industries, I'm sure is true, but I can't speak to it uh, mm -hmm. to that extent. Okay, so it seems like St. Adela doesn't seem to expect to win this legal ba battle. <laughs> Do you think this might have just been a strategy to get his name out there? Oh, that's definitely a possibility um, and probably a good one at that. I mean, judging from the rest of his work over the last few decades that he's put together, it does fall in line with what his artistic practice is. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is just another artwork for him. Um, whether he admits as much is another question, but I think it's pretty clever and a good way of gaining publicity. I mean, we're talking about it right now. Mm -hmm. Well, Evan, it kind of all comes down to how it's going to end. How do you think this case is going to resolve itself? Realistically, I see it being thrown out. The museums uh, filed a motion to dismiss the suit. Senadella now has until the 18th, I believe, to respond. I'm not sure if there's been any updates since then. But as far as proving what he alleges, that there is a, quote, museum cartel, um, you're going to need an abundance of evidence that I'm not sure is really out there. Yes, indeed. We're just going to have to wait and see what the verdict on this case is going to be. Evan, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today.